Uh, Trig, does anybody ever ask you if you have like yellow fever? <laughs> well, my, my fiance is Korean, so I, I get accused of that. All Yo, David and Andrew from the Fun Bros here, and thank you for clicking on that special Brooklyn food crawl. But before we get into that video, we gotta tell you about a brand new media outlet and YouTube channel called Gold Thread. It is a publication based out of Hong Kong that is covering modern Chinese culture, what they eat, and what they think. The stories on Gold Thread definitely relate to a lot of material that we've made before. So if you are interested in our channel, definitely check out Gold Thread. Here is one of their stories called Shaolin Hip Hop. Alright, if you guys thought that video was cool, definitely check out more at Gold Thread. Subscribe to their channel down below in the description right here. But for now, enjoy this Brooklyn New Wave Asian food crawl. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a special Fung Bros Food and you guys already know what it is on our channel. We are showing you guys the coolest people doing the coolest things with Asian food out in New York. That's our mission right now and today we are out in Brooklyn. So whether you want to use the word hipster, modern, new wave, untraditional, whatever you want to call it, these three spots that we're hitting up today have amazing backstories and very highly regarded food. So I'm very, very, very excited. This is the next generation of Asian food in Brooklyn. Let's go. All right, everybody. I am sitting down with the two founders of Winsun right now. We got Josh and Trigman. Is this a hipster Taiwanese spot? And partially is it because you're here? It unavoidably has hipster qualities yeah, because, we're, because we're in Brooklyn. It's an easy way to like just group or categorize what we're doing. Like very, very easy, like without effort. People can use it in a really like derogatory way. You know? Like this is uh, very honestly a culinary impression that Taiwan has made on us and, and we're expressing it through a lens that is, you know, uh, an American, a new American background. And well, let's dive into some of these dishes real quick. Salty, salty soy milk. You can see the, uh, you know, the black vinegar curdles the soy milk that we make here in house. And this is like a classic Taiwanese uh, breakfast food. Yeah, this is you know, a personal favorite of ours, and one of the best parts of Taiwan is the breakfast culture. No, oh, by the way, you're into this that. Is a really great flavor, man. Thanks, thanks. That was so good. This is a clams and basil. It's just a very simple dish of uh, clams with Shaoxing rice wine. So we put a scallion pancake underneath just to soak up some of the some of the broth. You know, not really a typical way to serve clams and basil. It's extra thick. Like it's the thicker kind. I feel like it's not as airy. It soaks up a lot of the juice. I feel like, and I'm really into scallion pancakes, that chewiness is almost like comparable more to like a, like a pizza crust. Uh, Trig, does anybody ever ask you if you have like yellow fever? <laughs> well, my, my fiance is Korean, so I, I get accused of that often, but... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, fiance Korean, you're serving Taiwanese food, how does she feel about it? Um, <laughs> she, she's supportive. Uh, she just gets a little right, upset right, when right. I start telling her I want to go to like Chinese school and like learn, b get better at Mandarin. And she's like, hey, you should learn Korean, and then you're <laughs> yeah. like, I don't serve Korean food yet. <laughs> Sang to, yeah. This is like a, a fun dish for us too that we that we bonded over super early. It's not necessarily the most iconic Taiwanese dish, but you do see it in a lot of Taiwanese restaurants, but it has like Szechuan roots, and it's a super balanced vegetable forward pork stir fry. It's funny to see like white people try to eat like really small garlic chives with really small grains of rice. I'm not gonna lie, it, it's hard for me. <laughs> yeah, that'd be me too, but like, you know, like it's just- but it's definitely- The key is you just shovel it into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But thank dude, you so yo, Trick, Josh, thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys can go back to work. I'm gonna I'm finish up the food here. Win Sun at 159 grand. You guys need to check it out. All right, everybody, I made it out to Bushwick, Brooklyn, and I'm in front of a spot that is blending two cuisines that a lot of people love out there. I'm talking about American barbecue and Vietnamese food. Yes, right now I'm outside of, of Lucy's Vietnamese Kitchen, led by Chef Johnny. Let's go check it out. All 
All right, we are in the back of the kitchen of Lucy's Vietnamese Kitchen, man. I'm here with Chef Johnny Nguyen. Yo, thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate here. you coming through. I'm excited. Man, you, you got this uh, smoked brisket pho. That's what we do. Let's go make it. Yeah. It looks delicious. The brisket looks fatty. The broth is a vegetarian broth. Vegetarian broth all the way. Vegan what? broth. Vegan? You took it a step further. You said vegan. Vegan broth, guys. Since the beef flavor is so strong from the brisket that you wouldn't need to put in like a beef broth. Wouldn't need to. Yeah. Dude, look at this beef right here. Oh my God. I basically took two things I was really good at, which is smoking barbecue and um, basically pho. So I took a 14 hour smoked brisket, put in some pho and Took two coaches and just smashed it. It works really well. That is delicious, man. <laughs> so I read that you got a lot of your influence from your grandmother. Inspiration from my grandmother, seeing her work so many jobs just to make sure I was happy. Hey, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here raising me. I wanted to open something in her name. And you'd be like, yo, this is like the true American dream. Yeah. This is the brisket bun me. Pickled carrots, fresh cucumbers, fresh brisket, 14 hours, basil, cilantro, bean sprouts, the pho bun me. I mean, essentially you've merged uh, a barbecue brisket sandwich into a bun me, kind of. Yeah, basically. The mayo. House-made aioli. House-made aioli, garlic aioli. Crispy on the outside, airy in the middle. This is a good sandwich. So this is not your typical Vietnamese restaurant. A small restaurant, one table that everyone can eat together, have conversations with each other, and just be able to interact, you know? You only have three things on the menu. Growing up in a restaurant, there's always like 20, 30, 40 different items. I don't want to make a shop that had a couple items that were really done well. Fresh ingredients, fresh bread, fresh meat, cooked well done. And when you come, you get the same product, you get the same product over and over the same way a million times. Uh, Food doesn't have to be hard. It don't have to be hard. Food don't gotta be complicated. Yo, I'm off on that. Yo, thank you, Johnny, appreciate, appreciate that, man. Lucy's Vietnamese Kitchen, check it out. You're gonna see more of these spots popping up in the future. All right, everybody, we have made it to our third and final spot on this new Wave Asian Brooklyn excursion. We're here out in Greenpoint, and we're outside of a spot called Bauberg, owned and operated by Chef Bao Bao. That's just her nickname. There's so many different influences in this spot, everything from her French culinary techniques to some Japanese influence to a bunch of Southeast Asian and Chinese influences. Let's go check it out. All right, I'm here at Bauberg with Chef Bao Bao. Thank you so much for being here. I Thank appreciate it. Thank you for being it. here. So it's a mix of authentic dishes and then authentic parts of a dish with kind of new ways of doing yes, it. Yes, yes. Okay. So this one is a uh, yam mun sen, which is like a Thai style ceviche. Mm -hmm. It's like chill um, glass noodle with seafood and like uh, spicy yeah. lamb dressing. Kind of looks like a uh, papaya salad slash it's not like papaya salad, it's oh. just like ceviche. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I love this shrimp that you got here. It's humongous, you butterflied it, it's juicy, look at that. You did not skimp on the shrimp. No, that's Dang. what my grandma said, that never be cheap on ingredients. Um, in Chinese, uh, this is like fun si, or the, like the rice noodles. Yeah. So it's like, I've never really had it in like a salad form, which I think is really cool. This dish, uh, we call it khao soy. Everything here is authentic besides the duck leg confit mm -hmm. that I, I use my, like, you know, fusions. Um, Your French culinary background, My French background, culinary right? background okay. to merge them together. And for those who don't know, what is confit? Just con so that it's like a yeah. slow cook process in the oven. You, you use like a duck fat to cover the, the meat the duck leg itself, just soaking in, inside the, the duck pad just to cover it. Yo, that duck is super soft, just melting in my mouth. Look at all that seasoning that's stuck on that duck. Are those peppers? Uh, those are coriander seeds. Coriander seeds, look at that. Black pepper. That one is apra. In Northern Thai, it means the fish that cooks in banana leaf. What is this? That one is a Thai eggplant. Thai eggplant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the, the texture, like the flakiness, and, and also the taste is not too fishy. 
What are some things that you've experienced that were like, you know, positive and negatives of being a female chef? Not that many restaurants want to hire women to, 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 to be a line cook. They, they probably... They don't want drama. Probably things that, yeah, is drama and also like weak weakness. In Asia, yeah. you will see so many women cooking For than sure. men. Stereotypically or traditionally, everybody's like, oh, women in the kitchen. Yes. But then, oh, women can't cook in a competition. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. where does that balance <laughs> make sense? Where you're going to say no. women should be in the kitchen and then you say that they can't cook. Yeah. Just choose one. But when I get a job, I don't show my weakness. I feel I, I just show them that I can do what you do. And, and I trying to prove that it's not just male can do it. We, women can do it too. The last dish is a, a sizzling mussel pancake. Mm -hmm. And I like the, the way that Korean, they serve their pancake. The seafood pancake. Yeah, the seafood pancake. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I was thinking like maybe I should just using my Thai ingredient and adapt it to, you know, the, the Southeast Asian uh -huh. fusions. Yeah. This is not though, just sriracha. It's the sauce that I made and I just add sriracha mm. on top of it. I like that a lot. You like it? Really yeah, crispy. Texture, Got some egg in there. Scallions. I love scallions. You don't pitch this as the most authentic Thai spot, but you know what I think is authentically Thai? Is the attitude and the vibe here. Like you guys are very hospitable, very nice. That is a trait of Thai spots. Land of smile, Thailand. The land of smiles, <laughs> yes. All right, everybody, that wraps up Bao Bao. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Cup, cup, cup. All right, everybody, that wraps up our Brooklyn crawl. Man, I'm out in Greenpoint right now at Bedford in Manhattan. We went through East Williamsburg, we went through Bushwick. Now we're in Greenpoint with Win Sun. You had a Taiwanese American team up with a Southern guy to create the new Taiwanese American food. And then Johnny Win is combining barbecue with pho in a way that can probably expand into many, many different shops. And now with Chef Bao Bao and her unique mixture of influences, I mean, she's serving a really different style of food. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like this series. And until next time, I'm out. Peace. Yo, thank you guys so much for watching that video. Huge shout out to Gold Thread for sponsoring it. And if you are interested in dope stories about modern China told by friends in Hong Kong, then definitely check out the Gold Thread YouTube channel, social media, website. Until next time, we're the Fun Brothers. We're out. Peace. I met someone that they say they know Thai food and they've been to Thailand for just like a couple hours because of the landing. They, they, right, they need to was, just change. It was, it was a layover. To, yeah, layover. And they said, yeah, I've been to it's Thailand. Like, I've been to Thailand. This is not real Thai. You ate the food from airport and you said, if you want to get like a real authentic Thai food, you really need to go to like a small town. And you say, instead of saying, I've been to the Thai airport, yes, I've been to definitely. a Thai grandma's house. Yes. Never eaten at a Thai grandma's house. Don't you come in here acting <laughs> like you know Thai food. No. <laughs>